Welcome back to the show. Now, whether you know about racing, know whether you know about horses or not, our next guest on the sofa joining us is going to be giving you a rundown and a little bit more of communication of what it's all about and how it and she can help you. So please welcome Hannah McCabe, the founder of Dark Horse Communications. Now, what a fantastic name. Thank you, First off, <laughs> why and how the name of that course? I know it's a bit cliche, but is there something more to it? Um, I think it's, it's riding's been a passion of mine since uh, early childhood. I've always worked in the marketing and communications industry and sort of I reached a certain milestone birthday and thought that it would be a good time to finally, you know, combine my passion and my profession. Because as they say, you know, if you do what you love, you're never working a day in your life. Um, I've got two young children and for me I wanted to find something that you know really fulfilled um, you know if I'm going to be away from my children working long hours I want it to be doing something that you know really feeds my soul so that was that and honestly when it came to the name I just I thought there was a good way I love monochrome yeah. <laughs> I'm always in black and white um, and yeah the name just sort of stuck and I thought I could have some fun with the branding so works that was that and also I was I, or I'm running another PR agency at the time also so it was a sideline and therefore I'm a bit of a dark horse and people weren't expecting it, <laughs> yeah, I, like it. I wanted to ask you about maybe international brands do they uh, are, are they wanting to get into the market here do you see that yeah so I think um, certainly over the last couple of years we've seen um, a big rise in the equestrian industry here yeah. overall um, the numbers are growing in terms of horses coming in for competitions We've got more uh, events coming in, big five stars. So we've got the, recently we had the first Longines League of Nations, which is held in Abu Dhabi. There's the new Global Champions Arabians Tour with a huge 17 million euro prize fund that picked the UAE as the second stop on its tour. So I think, you know, the industry's booming and that is attracting, you know, outside brands that are looking to sponsor riders in the region, Definitely. to bring their brands into the region and to really, you know, yeah. they see this, growth so that's really exciting for us as a as a country david what do you think about that yeah it's interesting hannah good to have you on the show and um how do you think the recent long jeans league of nations has gone it's done a great service i think for the uae exactly yeah. i think obviously uh, what's really exciting is that the uae have qualified a show jumping team for the olympics for the first time um, in history, yeah. so 2024 is a really great year for, for the country and for Absolutely. equestrianism. The Longines League of Nations gave the team a chance to sort of compete against the world's best on home turf. Obviously, they're not part of the tour, um, but they, you know, they had obviously a sort of wild card to compete here, and they really held their own. They did a fantastic job, and it's a great stepping stone towards Paris. Great. Now, horse nut ownership numbers are up. Yes. Which is very good news for you. They good, are. Good news for the UAE. <laughs> yeah. What are some of the goals? What are the, some of the, the changes that you're hoping to see take place here in the Emirates? And of course, that would therefore affect you. Yeah, I think, look, for me, uh, you know, as well as running the agency, I'm also a judge. Um, so I judge dressage competitions. Uh, so that's uh, something that's another passion. I don't have much time. Um, but uh, what's really exciting with the numbers coming up is, is the growth and the development of the sport. The Equestrian Federation um, are really investing with a show jumping committee, a dressage committee to, you know, to sort of start from the grassroots to help develop the sport with uh, younger riders, especially with Emirati riders. And I think it's a really exciting time. What about you as a rider? You've been riding since you were what, four? I have, and I've, uh, thanks to Equitrans actually, I've had many horses uh, fly over um, with varying degrees of success of, of the horses. Um, I used to train horses for various members of the royal family, Arabian show horses for the ridden classes, um, which sadly we don't, we don't have at the moment. Um, I don't have time. I would love to ride more, and I, and I do ride, but whenever I try to get serious about competing, most of my work obviously is weekends. Uh, most of the big events that I manage the PR for tend to be at the weekend. So I'm already um, abandoning my husband and children. <laughs> when, they, when they see me trotting off to the stables at 6 a.m., I, I get some stern looks. Do so, any of them ride? No, my children do the odd pony ride if we go to, you know, if they come with me to the stables. 
it's a sport that my husband would rather not encourage. It's rather expensive um, ownership. And also, again, you know, selfishly, it's, it's my thing. Um, you know, we're, we're quite happy to push them into football and, uh, and other sports, but I'm sure it's one of those that when they start to ask, of course, I'd so, love to encourage. So the dressage, though, the UAE team uh, was recently in the Asian Games, That's right? That's right, yes. Um, so that was the first time that the UAE sent a team to the Asian Games, um, which was amazing. We've now got uh, LA 2028 to sort of look forward to, which seems like a long way off, but when it comes to training these horses, you know, there is so much that goes into getting them up to sort of Grand Prix level. And, um, you know, some of the riders here have breeding programs where they are you know, sort of bringing the horses up through the levels themselves. And it, it takes a, an awful amount of time and dedication. And it's not something that you can rush. So it's a good thing that we're looking forward to that. Going back to the question that I asked you earlier, I just wanted to know some of the brands, maybe names that are big that are coming to the region. Yeah, so um, Animo is a, is a big equestrian brand from Italy. They are, um, you know, have sponsored some of the recent two star show jumping events. Then you've got obviously a lot of the homegrown brands here as well. And and that's another interesting nice. fact is, is to see a lot more homegrown yeah. equestrian brands, especially on the clothing side. Again, a lot of Emirati owned brands that are, are cropping up. So I think it, it shows that there's a huge appetite and, and people are really investing in the industry. Well, Hannah, thank you so much for being on our show. Thank You're full you of for surprises. having me. <laughs> I feel like every time we bump into you, it's like a whole new world. That a we're whole new about. world, a yeah. A whole new Hannah. <laughs> decade by decade. Thank you for having me. <laughs> we'll stay right here. Well, we've got something important to do right over there with David. Uh, yes, DXB we've got DXV and 60. It's just a couple of questions right. to get to know you better. Sure. So I'm going to cue the clock in three, two, one. If you weren't in the equestrian industry, what would you be doing? Aviation. Probably. Okay. What was your first job? Uh, very first job was in travel. Travel. Okay. Yeah. So just linking yeah. to that. <laughs> uh, what is your motto in life and work? Have a fair balance between family and business, which has always been hard to keep. Especially with nowadays, it's yeah. also very hard. <laughs> um, what is your favorite horse breed? Thoroughbreds. Okay. Polo to ride, but to watch, I'd say thoroughbred. Right? Mm -hmm. Nice. And if you would have a superpower, what would it be? Uh, Spider-Man. Sp being <laughs> Spider-Man, okay. <laughs> and let's say, what is your favorite uh, ex exterior uh, event of uh, the year? Um, I'd say Dubai World Cup. Dubai World, World Cup? Yeah, I'm a racing fan. Okay, just before we wrap up right now, why Dubai? Why Dubai? I think Dubai has placed us right in the middle of the world. It's given us great opportunities. And when I moved here, I think it was more what America's were in the 70s and 80s. You could come here as an entrepreneur, someone new, launch your business. Um, lots of opportunities. Government supported you. And uh, yeah, it's, like it's done well. Uh, I love when you asked David, by the way, about his favorite horse breed. He answered, and we're all like, mm, as if we know what he's like, talking yeah, straight about. Away, like, straight away, straight <laughs> away. I was like, yeah, that is the horse that I like as well. <laughs> oh, you guys. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you for educating us, David, and being yes. here. Um, Thanks for being and, here. And we we'll definitely look forward to seeing you again. And well, I'll see you at the races for sure. Definitely. Wonderful. Looking forward to World Cup. Thank you so much for being here as well. Thank and, you, um, I'll, I'll see you racing around somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right, so coming up, we have got loads of prizes to give you, so you need to stick around. And we have our musical performance for tonight from Eleonora Babashiki.